Look at that, Harry Potter, eat your heart out. Oh my gosh, dynamite chili. <laughs> we need to go to this, hold on a minute. Well, hello guys. Yes, we're doing another touring video today. This is definitely a full series, so check out the free things to do in London playlist. But I am in Marylebone, although for many years I call it Marylebone, so I might flick between the two pronunciations, but yes, I'm gonna take you on a little bit of a walking tour of some of my favorite places to visit in Marylebone, and we're gonna kick off with Sherlock Holmes's house. And you can tell it is a Saturday afternoon. My gosh, I did not get up early enough to film this this morning. One minute it's sunny, the next minute it looks like it's going to rain. But yes, we're outside the iconic Sherlock Holmes Museum. Let me know, have you been? And there is quite the queue to get in. I feel like such a tourist. This is also reminding me, I did like a vlog in lockdown when we were allowed to go for walks and I did a video on Baker Street. But yes, you've got the blue plaque, which I will show you in a second. And um, yeah, it's so sweet, a really, really good little museum. I don't think you can film in there, hence why I've never shown it. Um, but yeah, and then we're gonna head around to Madame Tussauds and also show you where John Lennon used to live. So there we have the blue plaque. You see these all over London, uh, citing something iconic, like someone living in a building for a period of time, but building 221B, Sherlock Holmes, the detective. And it looks like quite a cute little store, doesn't it? I know there's a store in there, you can buy bits and bobs and see where he technically lived. That is one busy queue. Oh dear, it's really windy today. So I'm hoping this is doing its job. Uh, but yeah, let's head on down to Baker Street. I do have to say this road here, well, we're actually on Baker Street. It's one of the most aggressive roads. I've had to edit out uh, some effing and blinding, but yes, it is a little bit, on the weather's looking a bit iffy, although it's not meant to rain, but look at that sky, it looks quite cool, doesn't it? Also, anyone watching this, have you ever done the run from Marlebone Station all the way down there to Baker Street Station to catch a train, or vice versa? It's not, it's not the funnest run. I do not miss my days of commuting. Although, when it's a sunny day, oh my God, it's so windy. Um, I do kind of wish I had a garden. I should have tied my hair up, look at this. Oh dear. And I'm gonna call out some of the architecture. I always like this style of building. Now the area at Marylebone, I'm trying to say Marylebone, Marylebone is, um, yeah, very, very affluent and it's a very fancy schmancy place to be. And the majority of the architecture is from the 1900s and then quite a fair bit is actually 50s as well. As you'll see around there, we go little hop on, hop off London bus there. But as I pan round, this is one heck of a busy road. It's not the most glamorous thing to show you, I must confess. This whole area was originally called St. Mary Le Bourne, uh, which means St. Mary by the stream, and then it got renamed eventually to Mary Le Bourne. Am I saying that right? Anyway, um, and it wasn't until, yeah, the 1900s that this area actually became like super, super nice. It was a bit slummy, I guess like most places in London. Um, and then quite a lot of the area reading online was heavily hit by the Second World War. So you do see, and we'll see as we go around, a bunch of architecture and buildings, obviously that are from like the 1900s, late 1800s, and then suddenly like stuff from the 1950s where things got rebuilt. And we're outside the famous Madame Tussauds, London. Ah, doesn't it look good? Oh my God, do you remember the days when you weren't able to pre-buy a ticket in the queue? Do you remember back in the day? Did you ever used to drive along here? The queue, I mean, it still can be long, was for miles. So I've actually only ever heard really, really good reviews about this. So I guess if you're a tourist, you're probably gonna come here. I've never been. I personally like watching videos of like really bad wax works because I find them absolutely hilarious. So um, yeah, I'm more likely to enjoy those ones. <laughs> oh, I haven't shown this type of thing in a while. There we go. A kind of normal one bedroom <laughs> flat, just over a million pounds. And guess what? You even get bars on your kitchen window. What a treat. Oh my gosh, and I just noticed this one. Um, you don't even get a bedroom in this one. It's a studio for 1700 pounds per month oh my days honestly london prices are depressing but the rental market i don't know about the rest of the country the rental market in london is horrific now crazy money um and uh actual properties if you own them haven't really gone up that much in the last couple of years so 
Yeah, pretty bad. But we're going down Baker Street. Um, it's like not well, really much going on. You've got things like Nando's, buses constantly going past bills. Lots of just chain restaurants, to be fair. Yeah, it's not like London's finest selection. McDonald's always does the job, but I want to show you a little bit off the beaten track. Although kitchen at homes always looks quite cute. So if you're looking for somewhere, that probably is quite nice. God, those e-bikes are so fast these days. I should say e-scooters. Um, you do see some of them where they've got like little battery packs duct taped <laughs> to the bars, to the, I don't know, the middle section. Um, they cannot be legal. I was cycling on a line bike the other day, full pelt. I was like going for it and people just whiz past me. They must be going probably close to 40 miles an hour at times. <laughs> Not for me. But if you're into architecture, I love this area. Look at these stunning red brick buildings. They are absolutely gorgeous, aren't they? And I always appreciate a little flower box, especially at ground level, because, yeah, they would usually get nicked, but I can see they're tied to the railings. Oh, pretty. And there are a lot of blue plaques around here. This is probably a really good example. Look at that, Harry Potter, eat your heart out. And then that unfortunate monstrosity from the 50s. And then the gorgeousness of the late 1800s. Do not quote me on those dates, but you know, it's that kind of vibe. You get what I'm trying to say. But lots of Harry Potter looking houses absolutely everywhere. Also, I really like this road because you have a really solid cycle path. And on the corner here on Crawford Street, this is always a vibe when it's raining around here. You've got this beautiful florists. How cute is that with the little bike outside? I wanted to show you because I feel like you guys would love this. Look at this old pharmacy. It's so cool. Oh, I always think, oh, that's a, I'm not, I'm not sure about that gray color. I know that's like a cool color. A lot of people have Porsches have that. But anyway, but look how cool this is with all the old signs. And I really love this old light. It's so cool that it's still intact. I'm sure it's been repaired a few times, but yeah, since 1814. But on Montague Square, which is absolutely stunning. Yes, we are at the blue plaque of the home of John Lennon for 40 years. So he lived here. 1968, wow. Gosh, how many floors is that? I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe even seven in the roof. But look, oh look with the old car. I bet my dad's watching this going, I had one of them. My dad seems to have had every car that ever existed. Um, but look at this beautiful square before a car comes. And then you have this lovely greenery in the middle that you'll need a key for uh, if you're a resident. People are always shocked by that. But yeah, in central London, Mayfair, Chelsea, Kensington and Soho, I don't know, and some other boroughs as well. Um, you will need a key. You have to be a resident living in the area in order to have access to it. Um, it's a bit limiting to, you know, those that don't live in the area, but we have public parks as well. See, I prefer the color of this than that car that went past. What was that car, Rolls Royce? I don't know, but what a gorgeous square. I don't think I'd want to live this central, but you know, I get it. And this area, like the Paddington area, I did a vlog on quite some time ago. You do have all of the back street news houses, which yeah, were the original, I guess, stable houses. I think they were for birds back in the day um, of the main houses on the, yeah, the main road. So now they are converted and no, sadly, they don't have gardens. Sometimes they have a roof terrace, but they are really, really expensive. Did anyone watch that video back in the day? That's a throwback, isn't it? I went round and showed you all loads of different news roads. Maybe I should do that again because I did enjoy that and then flashed up all the ridiculous prices. <laughs> Just a shame you didn't buy one of these back in the 80s, eh? <laughs> when they cost next to nothing because no one wanted them. And as I was waiting to cross the road, I have never ever noticed this. There is a blue plaque. Oh gosh, can you even read that? That's a bit better. John Lennon, MBE and George Harrison worked here. Never knew that. I mean, they didn't work there. They were not estate agents. It was called Apple Boutique. It was a clothing store and they worked there. I think I've never noticed how busy it is um, on the road here. It is one busy, busy area. So many car horns, but yes, you've got a cool coffee place on the corner there. Oh, I like that shop front. Established 1972, oh, that's kind of old. Definitely older than me, but we're gonna head on down and show you some of the sites. This area is a mixture of different stores and restaurants, and I do have to call out, look at this little, the uh, Ted's grooming room, as in Ted Baker. There's quite a lot of those in London now. But yeah, you've got some art galleries. It's kind of fancy, and it definitely leans more towards the male end of things. Um, a lot of the stores are, yeah, for blokes. Very nice stores. Oh, we just walked past this well. Sir, Sir Henry Segrave, world speed record holder, lived there for 
Oh, only three years. That's not too long, is it? Do they just have to live there one year? I don't know. But um, yeah, they're quite fun. I don't really notice them that much when I walk um, around anymore. So sometimes when I make these videos, it's quite nice for me to consciously make the effort. Oh, a lot of guys at stores. I haven't been down here in ages. I think I get more excited about the shop fronts, to be honest. And the dogs. Oh my gosh, that dog is beautiful. And the sun's trying. It's trying to come out. And as I pan to the left, look at that. Cromford Leather Co as well. Oh, I think someone important just came out of that car. But look, lots of really nice stores. John Simmons, Magnus. Oh, Chilton Street Deli, that's a popular one. Look at this little store. How stunning is this? You know what I'm like, I'm very bad at keeping plants. A little hydrangea there with the pot. 24 pounds and then 35 for the pot, geez. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Oh, look at that one in there. You know I love flowers. Ooh, Sunspell as well. They do fantastic clothing for men. They're quite famous for their polo t-shirts, actually, knitted. And of course, there's always some kind of urban defender knocking around these places. Um, and then Casely Hayford on the end there. I think that's been there for a very long time. Quite a number of years ago now. How old am I? Maybe 10, 11 years ago, Joe Casey Hayford. Um, we did a collaboration with him at John Lewis and I got to work with him and do photo shoots with him. And he was honestly like the nicest guy. So yeah, he is greatly missed, but glad to see that his store is still here and I know his kids are kind of continuing his legacy. But look at that whiskey shop, isn't that cool? Do you see what I mean? They have some cool stuff down here. And you're not gonna do without a coffee. Monaco is a really good place to get coffee, by the way. And uh, yeah, lots of little places just have a little mooch on a Saturday afternoon. And the most famous building down here is the fire station, which closed, um, I think it was like 30 odd years ago, but it's a grade two listed building. And now it is the Chilton Firehouse, which is a fancy restaurant, a bit of a, I'm, it's not really a members club, but it's kind of classed a little bit like that, as in like the exclusivity. Um, but yeah, I've been there a few times, like it's okay. It's not like the best restaurant in the world, but uh, yeah, you often see pap shots of people coming out at weary hours in the morning. Actually, I think you have to be a member to stay there. So yeah, this is the door that people come through. It's quite, quite a nice little garden area outside, actually. If you can get a reservation outside, I think it's good for drinks and uh, nibbles. Just thinking about it, I don't think I've ever vlogged a meal there. Maybe I should. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a very honest review. All the bikes lined up, but uh, yeah, there's always lots of pubs. Oh gosh, is that closed now? I used to go there. Quite often, right, as I pan round, not to make you too busy, you just got row upon row of kind of cool little cake shops. That's a matcha coffee, bubble tea and dessert. How matcha, that's a good name. And uh, yeah, a few things coming. But as we pan along, we're gonna go into proper Marlebone Village. I always think this pub, Claret, I think it's like a fancier uh, pub. Always looks really cool. And you can just sit out and enjoy the sun. I think it's more of like a nice-ish restaurant. But yeah, I always think that's quite nice. I've never been, I need to add it to my list. I'm gonna say very quickly, I finally found somewhere to like balance you guys. I think I didn't realize how loud this area is until I filmed this video. I have tried to like, film when there hasn't been mopeds driving past, people beeping. I'm like in shock, I'm in shock. Also just got a glimpse of myself. And I'm looking very bleak today. I'm definitely not wearing what is probably in the thumbnail, but I am autumnal, <laughs> literally in a full on black outfit. Let me show you my jeans. Full on wash black jeans, which I love. I got them from Rag and Bone. They were kind of expensive, but I feel like a tourist. Look at my white trainers, I got them. Um, a few weeks ago, like they're okay. I feel like they're just a bit too white, right? I don't, anyway, I'm not gonna pray for rain. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting ready for autumn already. We know I wanna wish summer away, but yeah, if you're enjoying this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Just waiting for this moped to go past. There's just noise, constant noise, goodness me. And if there's not road noise, there was construction noise. Oh, it stopped for a second. Gosh, Saturday afternoon and there's construction noise. Right, and across here, I always think this hotel looks absolutely gorgeous. So as you can see, the edge of Manchester Street and George Street. If you're wondering, that's Durant's Hotel. And I looked it up, it's about 360, 370 pound a night. So kind of expensive. I finally found a map. There's not many of these in this area. Um, I also don't like it because that is north. But anyway, we came from Baker Street. Um, we have done a little bit around here, Montague Street back and forth, back and forth. And then we are here on the edge of the Wallace Collection, which I know some of you guys would like to see. Um, I don't believe you can film in there, so apologies. But we are at Manchester Square. And I'm gonna go down and go along the Marlebone High Street with all the cool shops and everything that's going on. But yes, this video could be really, really long. So you can see Selfridges, 
I'm not going to have time to show you all of it, but like I said, this is going to be a vlog series, so stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed, and you'll get to see a little bit more of London off the beaten track. But the Wallace collection is definitely one of the top things to do in Marlebone. It's free and it's open daily. In lockdown, this was all boarded up because they were renovating it. Oh yes, I remember, I tried to come. But they do change the exhibitions quite often, actually. What have they got on at the moment? Portraits of dogs? Oh my gosh, <laughs> we need to go to this, hold on a minute. It says portraits of dogs, 29th of March to the 15th of October this year, book now. Do I have to have booked? Oh my gosh, could you imagine? I want a dog so bad. Okay, so I just spoke to literally the nicest guy ever. So the uh, dog portrait exhibition is a paid one. I'm, uh, I'm gonna look up in a second how much it is, um, but there is a free exhibition on anyway if you wanna come have a look. Um, I just realized I'm also going to the cinema in like an hour and a half to see Indiana Jones. Apparently it's really good and they've like CGI'd his face and anyway, I'm going off on a tangent there. Um, so I'm definitely gonna come back to that because that looks fantastic. So if you're into dogs, add to your list <laughs> this exhibition. Okay, it's 14 pounds for adults, seven for like teenagers and then under 12s are free and you can, they've got lots of different combo tickets, but looking on the site, there are some amazing paintings. So I'm definitely gonna come back to that, whether I can film it or not. <laughs> but back to the vlog. Oh, this type of road is exactly why I love London. When you're like going home in a taxi and you're like, oh, I love it. Look at that little balcony. But yeah, this square is really, really cool. It's very, very busy where the traffic is going through. Oh, windy to the Marlebone High Street. So let's head on over. Love this because we're actually only maybe a three minute walk from Oxford Street where just kind of Selfridges is just over that way but look at these old school stores they look so cool but it looks like they'll be back in September but yeah they're selling all of these different treats oh my gosh dynamite chili I'm not a Marmite fan at all um, can I see what's inside oh it looks like oh if I could get it come on camera there we go Oh, wait a minute. This is the famous sandwich place for like big, thick sandwiches. The queue goes around the corner. I think I've like, yeah, just never noticed it, but established in 1900, four generations. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have to add that. That will be part of our autumn walks, guys, when it's pissing down with rain and I'll be like, let's go and get like a hot, I don't know, salty sandwich of some form. I can't believe how many times I've walked past that. But anyway, I'm gonna show you a popular pub, which is the Coach Maker's Arms. This is one of the most popular pubs in the area. So if you're on Oxford Street, I don't know, you fancy a pint or just a bit of calmness. It's a very traditional uh, pub. And then we're gonna head down here and show you some of the restaurants. I've never noticed this shop before. The movies, I love old movie posters. Yeah, I have bought an unlimited ticket for the next couple of months at the cinema, so I'm gonna see everything that comes out. I cannot wait for Mission Impossible. Oh, look at that Jaws picture, that's cool. And then you have the Ivy Cafe. There's quite a few of these in London now. It's kind of like the Nando's for <laughs> slightly middle-class people. That one's okay. I think I prefer the Ivy Garden on the King's Road and it's still the same price. And then on the corner here, um, gosh, I remember going to this store trying to buy some grow grain when I was an intern at a fashion designers. It was a number of years ago, but I like what they've done with all those little rosettes. That's pretty cute, isn't it? And the Golden Eagle is always a bit of an Instagram spot, but yeah, another little pub. I mean, it's literally a stone's throw from that one. You can't go, well, you don't need to go more than a few meters for a pub here. But yes, yeah, so you've got lots of really nice restaurants here. This is a Hotel 108. Brasserie bar. Gosh, I haven't been there in ages. It's a good place to get a glass of wine and some olives. And there are so many of these around London now. I think I hadn't really noticed, but look at these cakes. Oh, yum indeed. What else have we got? Oh, look at these ones. Look at the meringue. Goodness. We love a bit of alfresco dining, but the place with the queue, and I've shown you this many times before. I always like the little side streets. Look at that. Is Le Entrecote, uh, which is the, yeah, French steak and chips or steak and fritz I should say place. So why does it have a queue? It's basically really cheap the amount of food that you get. You get two um, full plates of steak fritz and these like spe the special sauce. Um, they have house wine and that's it. It's like one of those places. There's quite a few of them. Uh, I think there's a few of, are there a couple of them in London now? But obviously it originated I think in Paris. So it's gone up a smidge in price, but yeah for 29 pounds you get entrecote steak, famous sauce, fries and a salad with walnuts and you get two full sittings and and uh, as I scoot down, it's only during set hours and you have to queue. Would 100% recommend, you get tons of food, um, but obviously if you're a vegetarian, <laughs> don't go. <laughs> and here we have the famous Marlborough High Street. Lots of wonderful, fancy stores and places to eat out. Ah, oh, the sun is finally coming out, but the buildings themselves 
Look at these. The red brick is absolutely brilliant. Oh, I just adore this type of building, although I would never live this central. It looks pretty cool. And all the fancy stores, all the odd one I can afford, maybe in sale. If you're looking for a present, this brand is always a good one to go for. And it always makes me laugh. We've got Waitrose, but Waitrose with a fancy clock. What's that all about? I like it. It's kind of fun. Actually, if you find yourself here on a Sunday, there's also a farmer's market. I think it's every single week. So um, yeah, I'm going to head up here and show you the Conrad store, which is kind of what revolutionized this area. So reading up about it, actually, I didn't know this. This whole street up until like the mid 1990s was like not really that big of a deal. And now it's like kind of cool and hip and trendy and very, very, very expensive. Um, it was because the Conrad store um, plonked themselves at the top of this road and all the other brands followed. So yeah, thumbs up to that. And I love any kind of flowers. Look at these single hydrangeas, right? How much is a Marlebone hydrangea? Probably a lot, £10.50 for one. Oh, but they're so pretty. And there's lots of like stores like this where you've got baked goods. You can't quite see it through the window, but very nice. But seeing that foods just reminded me the La Fromagerie. I forgot to show you. So let's quickly scoot in. It's a really, really cute place. And there's like a little restaurant next door. Oh, wow. They literally print it off every single day. Right. What have we got? What will you guys want to see? A couple of drinks over here. Cocktails, 11, 12, 14 pounds. Small plates there. A few different options. I always like showing you um, the menus. I think it's kind of good. I'm going to scoot up here to the sandwiches on the right hand side. Toasty for 12 pounds. Obviously, it's a lot more premium. God, this, honestly, I swear everyone has, everyone has a truffle option for everything now. I'm on the fence about truffle, real life problems. Sometimes I'm a fan, sometimes I'm not. And then they've got some specials to the takeaway. Oh, that's good. Also, a lot of dogs. Oh my god, look at all these doggies. <laughs> Now your local Aldi doesn't have a disco ball in it, does it? So yeah, this is kind of like a bit like a farm shop in a way. Um, lots of super yummy grab and go things here and the most beautiful fresh foods. I have 100% shown you this, but I feel like this was in lockdown. God, I keep referencing some lockdown, don't I? But um, yeah, £2.20 for a peach from Italy. If that's your budget, um, you are, I guess, winning at life, because I'm sure that's a very, very nice peach. And then we've got loads of baked goods as well. Six pound, all brioche loaf, very, very nice. And it smells incredible in here as well. And uh, yeah, they have a lot of their own label. These are different biscuits. Look at these baked goodies. Oh my gosh, absolutely scrum diddlyumptious. And even candied fruits, look at this. And uh, yeah, as I pan over, it's just a cool little shop and little restaurant and lots of, oh my gosh, dairy goods. And then there's this whole cheese room in the corner, which I'm not going to go in because it's a little bit too intimidating for me. Oh my gosh, but I love it when things have got like packaging like that, where it's all tied up. And we're going to be heading over to Daunt Books, which is very famous and maybe finally get myself a new book to read. shop is beautiful I hope you got a good kind of feel for it I did see a few books which I've been recommended but honestly they're like way cheaper in the supermarkets so I would have given a thumbs up to one of the books um, Act of Oblivion I've just started reading that I think I'm about like 80 pages in um, yeah and it was like half the price in Waitrose so um, I wasn't gonna buy anything but I really love those wooden uh, postcards they were so cute and definitely and I've said before recommend Green Lights by Matthew McCoy Conaghy, if I can say his name right, um, but the Audible book. This isn't an ad for Audible. Come on, Audible, sponsor me. Um, and if you sign up, you get like a free credit. So if you're going to pick any book and he narrates it, Green Lights is a really, really, really good one to listen to. But it's always fun to have a browse. I'll definitely go back if I need um, six pound a sheet wrapping paper. But this pub here is absolutely stunning. The Marlborough Bar and Kitchen. Again, lots of noisy vans. <laughs> I cannot believe how loud it is. But let's head on up to the Conrad store. And then you have La Brasseria over there. And I'm gonna be honest with you, 
I don't actually rate it, so I am going to save somewhere I think is a bit rubbish. You're probably better off going to Coat to the right. It's really good for like a drink, but yeah, I would not recommend to eat there. Just saying, there's plenty of other places to eat. Um, there's so many side roads as well that I'm not showing you. I'm so sorry. I will definitely come and do a bit more, um, yeah, back end of the summer and show you some more, some more bits of bobs. Another great pub. Prince Regent, a bit more of a normal kind of old man pub to be fair. Somewhere like Fishers is a much better place to eat. Let me show you the menu quickly. Maybe Maybe this is just more my kind of place, but uh, what have we got? Some brunch options, eggs benedict. And I quite like that you can get a small portion or a regular, you know, if you're not starving or you want to try a couple of different things. Um, yeah, this is just more my kind of place. A few vegetarian options. Um, I'm not showing that too quickly. Love me a frankfurter. I'm sure they won't mind if I quickly show you. Look how cute this place is. And I was like, it's a bit creepy with the taxidermy. But yeah, this is a good place maybe if you're coming with your family. Really nice. It's also a really cute place to go if you're on your own. There's like little seats that you can sit in. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just my preference. I prefer those kind of, I don't know, like European vibes and even more places to get coffee and a cake. And the last stop is going to be the Conrad store, store shop, I should say. God, I could get my words out. I'm tired. I'm going to have a quick look around here. But yes, I wonder who. There's always a black Mercedes knocking around, someone famous probably. But then we are up by the main road. I know I have not shown a big portion of Marlowe, but I'm doing what I can in this video. I don't want it to be too long. Uh, but let's see, there's a sale on. I feel like 15% off. Is that a sale? Not really. <laughs> oh, these are famous, aren't they? You can get these in Selfridges as well from £100. Yeah, they have some pretty cool things in here. It's definitely not my style if I'm honest with you um, but I've just seen look at these paper dome things I don't know what you call them um, and they're like little cities and little places around the world you got Fro Paris I should say what have we got here is this yeah New York does that represent New York um, is that it any other places London Maybe just the those three, but it's quite a cool idea, isn't it? Plants in a pot, oh my gosh. I probably need one of these because I am not someone who um, does very well at keeping plants. Terranium, 250 pounds. But they've got quite cool knickknacks in here. But yeah, they've got quite the best of the best, I would say, in Selfridges as well, but up to 30% off some stuff. Oh, I quite like that, that's quite cool. Goodness me, that's heavy. Wouldn't want to use it. Nice little sofa area, but I do like that art wall looks cool, doesn't it? Oh, this glassware is pretty fun, isn't it? Look at this little fishy. That's cool. I wouldn't want to use it all. It's so delicate. Look at this with the little, can you see that? Oh gosh, oh, it's a bell. I know I only showed you a little bit in there. It's definitely really not my kind of store. Um, I don't know. I just couldn't warrant spending the money, but it's nice to see some of it, but it does also show how much the stuff is all copied by other retailers um, and you can get versions of it way cheaper. But anyway, let me know. Do you have anything from the world famous Conrad store? Um, yeah, comment below. But now I'm in the park. I'm going to get a line bike because I need to get home. I might change, but I'm going to go to the cinema and see Indiana Jones and I don't want to be late because I personally love going to the cinema and being able to see all of the trailers before. But yes, thank you so much for making it this far in the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I did my best. The weather's a bit iffy um, and I didn't use my Sony camera. I do think the iPhone is a lot easier, but I th I'm going to hold out and try and get the iPhone 15 um, because I'm on the 13. I've heard the 14 has got better stability, um, but I definitely need something that's easy to grab and go because you can't film in these places with a proper camera. Even though sometimes you're allowed to film, it's just poor etiquette. Um, people always say to me, buy a gimbal. Jesus, like none of my vlogs would happen if I had that. People would be like, we don't want you filming. It looks too too iffy um, but anyway give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it subscribe to see more and again um, I'm going to do the playlist that has all the free kind of walking tours let me know where else you want to see I think I might add Camden to the list I used to live there so that could be a good thing to go and see what it's like now anyway I will see you next Friday at 6 p.m bye guys